Hello, this is Mike Summers, and I wanted to talk a little bit about watercolors, specifically the property of transparency. Now, sometimes a beginner, including myself, will simply choose colors they think are pretty. Then they'll proceed to attempt to paint something and might just be discouraged that their result didn't turn out like a tutorial or a video that they saw. This could be due to a difference in the transparency properties of the paints used. Uh, these watercolors that I'm using are professional grade and they're excellent colors, but they do have different transparency properties. I tried to pick some from my collection that were somewhat similar in color, but were different in their transparency. I went ahead and marked these very obviously. So uh, watercolors will uh, often come in different levels of transparency, including opaque, semi-opaque, semi-transparent, and transparent. So the, those that are opaque are just what you think. Nothing shows through as, as well as it does with the transparent colors. So uh, the little demo I'm gonna show you, I'm using these somewhat similar colors uh, just to show you a little bit how they blend differently. So first I have here uh, cadmium red and cerulean blue. This will take just a moment to get these on the paper. Let me go ahead and wet the paper a little bit first. Okay, and I'm dropping into this some cad red. Okay, you could already see that that's quite dark. And mixed in with that cadmium red, a cerulean blue. As a reminder, both these have opaque properties. One is listed as opaque, the other semi-opaque. Okay. Now, let's see these react a little bit together. You can see we have a definite red and a definite blue. They're blending in a little bit, but by and large, there's just kind of a strong line between them. I can work with the brush a little bit and try and mix them, and what you get is kind of a thick, muddy gradient as opposed to a smooth gradient. So that's working with opaque or semi-opaque colors. Let's try this exercise again, and I'm going to be using my transparent colors. Make sure the paper's getting wet. Okay. This is a scarlet pyrrole, and it's it, it's a different type of red, so don't be comparing the exact hues with each other. We're just going to compare how they work together. You can always already see that that is indeed a more transparent color. Now, watch what I do when I add ultramarine blue, which is also listed as transparent. Not a super scientific experience here, but you can see between the two, they're blending into a more smooth gradient. And I'm kind of forcing them a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more color on there. And even though I have more pigment in, they still have properties that make it so they're more blendable. And they'll blend together with a nice purple as opposed to a more opaque brown or something. So uh, why do you want transparent or semi-transparent, semi-opaque or, or opaque colors? It depends on the effect you're trying to uh, achieve. Now if you want a smooth gradient, obviously you're going to choose the transparent colors. Let me show you a couple of examples here. So this pair that I did, um, you can see that by and large the gradient is pretty smooth. You don't see very hard lines where a shadow starts and a highlight starts. Everything's pretty um, gradated better. And it's hard to see these types of properties through video or even images, but you can tell when colors show through other colors when you're looking at a watercolor. And typically uh, transparent colors were used when those effects are achieved. Here's quite a different um, picture here. 
very dark and bold, but you can still see that these colors uh, gradate quite smoothly. And even in this beak, um, I do have some very intentional hard lines when I do these white lines and such, these cracks in a beak. Obviously, when I have one color versus another, I want there to be a hard line. But when I'm trying to achieve a gradient, transparent colors can definitely help you with that. In this beak, we have this purple. It's not a straight line. It's just kind of mixed in there very smoothly. And again, that can be achieved through transparent colors. Let me show you one more example here. So this is a frog that I did. I wanted to draw your attention particularly to this leaf here. Now I have some reds and some very dark colors. There is a very hard line that distinguishes the dark portion to the reddish portion. And transparent colors may have helped me achieve a more uh, gradated effect there. But I definitely um, have times that I want to achieve that and other times that I want them to have more distinct lines. So anyway, I hope that was interesting to you. And for more information, please visit my Facebook page and website. Thank you.